Hey guys, it's Carl. Trying to choose the correct torque converter can sometimes be a difficult task. So let's take a few minutes to discuss them and help you figure out what you might need. First, a torque converter is nothing more than a fluid coupling hooking the engine's crankshaft to the transmission's input shaft. The body or outer shell of the converter bolts to and is spun by the crankshaft through the flex plate. This section of the converter, known as the pump, has directional fins that force fluid into another area called the turbine that is also connected to the input shaft of the transmission. Generally speaking, the faster the outer shell turns, the faster the input shaft of the transmission turns, and the faster the car moves down the highway. Here's where it gets tricky. The RPM at which the vehicle begins to move can be changed or modified by changing different attributes of the converter such as body diameter, internal fin count, and fin angle. This is where the term stall comes into play. Simply stated, stall is when the pump speed and the turbine speed are theoretically the same. Keep in mind that a stock large body converter with a higher fin count and a low degree of fin angle will create more force against the turbine at a lower engine speed, thus having a lower stall rating. Conversely, an aftermarket, smaller bodied converter having a lower fin count and a higher degree of fin angle will create less pressure against the turbine at a low crankshaft speed and will require more RPM to produce enough fluid force to turn the input shaft for the transmission. Thus, we get the term high stall converter. One more thing, let's talk about lockup clutches. Years ago, OE manufacturers started to put a clutch lining inside the converter that would engage in high gear at highway speeds to eliminate all internal slippage in the converter and lower engine RPM while cruising. This served to improve the overall fuel economy of the vehicle. Nowadays, with computer controls, racers have figured out this same clutch can be locked up in different gears and at different engine RPM to make their cars go faster. Now this may seem to some like an oversimplification of a torque converter, but it's important that we understand how the part works before we choose what we need to ensure we get the right part the first time. So, what information will you need to choose your converter? Well, the first thing, of course, is what transmission do you have? What is the bolt pattern and the flex plate you will be using? How many input shaft splines do you have? This is especially important on 700R4s as they have used two different spline counts over the years. Is it a lockup style transmission and torque converter from the factory? These three are important as well. How about the weight, tire size, and gear ratio of your vehicle? These will be different between a tow vehicle, a weekend racer, or an all-out drag car. Now, let's talk about the motor. As a general rule of thumb, you want your converter to stall approximately 5 to 800 RPM after the motor starts making power, depending on the intended use of the vehicle. How would I know that, you say? Well, having a dyno sheet for your motor would be best, but not all of us can afford that, right? How about looking at your cam card to see the RPM window the camshaft works in? All cam manufacturers print this, but be very careful. There are many other contributing factors that can affect this RPM range, such as bore and stroke, compression ratio, and intake manifold and cylinder head selection. That's why it should be used as an indicator and not relied upon as fact. How about power adders such as nitrous or a turbo or blower? These items can provide a significant power increase to an already stout motor and a lot of shock load to a converter. So you may need to add an additional component to your converter called a balloon plate. Added to the converter in weaker areas, it stops the converter from expanding or ballooning when the power shock is administered. Leaving off of a trans brake, that would also use a converter with a balloon plate. Releasing the button on a trans brake car is much like dumping the clutch on a manual shift car. Very shocking. In conclusion, we should also consider supporting parts to complete the installation. As you can imagine, a higher stall rating and extra power input will most certainly cause higher fluid temperatures. Additional transmission oil coolers and deeper oil pans are a great way to combat these higher temperatures as well as a better fluid. Also, the factory flex plate and bolts will not be up to the extra power and stresses applied to them either. 
Most aftermarket converters swap out thin OE mounting flanges that use nuts and bolts for attachment to the flex plate for a more robust, welded on, threaded steel block that uses a larger than factory bolt. Proper attaching hardware is a must for a complete and proper finish. We can help with all that here at Summit Racing. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.